In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an acid-base titration, starting with an acid that's already in solution form. I'm going to use a volumetric pipette to withdraw 20 milliliters. And you first squeeze the pipette bulb, place it on the top of the pipette, and then slowly release the pressure. Don't completely release your hand because it'll just suck up the liquid too, too vigorously. But if you slowly release the pressure, you'll controllably withdraw liquid into the pipette. You want to withdraw it past the mark on the volumetric pipette. It's underneath that 20 mil mark. It's going past it just now. So you go further than, than it, and then you put your thumb on top of the pipette to hold the liquid in place. You wiggle your, your thumb around a little bit to slowly release some air in there and lower the level of the liquid. It's almost there right now. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until it's right perfect, then hold on real tightly and then transfer it to your flask that you're going to put the liquid in. And I let it go and here I've delivered 20 milliliters of the acidic solution to a Erlenmeyer flask. Next we'll get our burette ready and secure it to a ring stand using a burette clamp. And then because it's such a tall piece of glassware, often I bring it down onto a chair so that you can pour more at like eye level instead of really straining your hand. So put a funnel in, make sure that the stop clock is horizontal so it's closed, and then add so some liquid that you're going to titrate with. Now the burette could have had some water in it that would be like rinsed out from, from other uh, past uses, and so you first need to rinse the burette. So you put a small amount in, maybe like 10 milliliters or so, and this is a rinse. So you can drain it out to rinse the tip into a waste beaker, and then pour it upside down with twirling to rinse the sides. Now any water that was in there should be rinsed out, and the residual liquid should be closer to the same molarity as the solution that you're using. After the rinse, now you're gonna fill it completely. So uh, using the funnel and lifting that up somewhat, pour your solution in. And do watch the liquid because you can easily just pour in too much so that it spills out, but just track it so that you can fill it to pretty near the top. And you do wanna fill it higher or it's often a good idea to fill it higher than the zero mark. But then, because you can't read past the zero mark, or you can't read, read the, the volume, you do have to drain it out until it is below the zero mark and somewhere between the, you know, anywhere where there's markings on it. At that point, you then have to read the initial volume and write that down in your notebook. The burette is now ready to go, and so we're ready to start the titration. So here is our uh, acid that we're going to titrate, and the end point for the titration is going to be a light pink color, which is pretty hard to see against a black background, so we put a white piece of paper or Kim wipe underneath. What I'm adding here is the phenolphthalein indicator. If you don't add that, you're not going to get a color change at all, and so you won't even know when the titration's over. A couple drops works. And here we go, now we're streaming in the base into the acidic solution. And if you have no idea what the end point is, you have to do this slowly, but uh, I fortunately kind of knew where it was gonna happen, and so I knew it was gonna take a lot of volume, and so I just stream it in for quite some time. Um, and you'll notice that the, the solution starts to have hints of pink. That's good, that's from the phenolphthalein. And the end point of the titration is gonna be when that pink sustains and you swirl the flask and you, you still have it pink. Notice I just used a wash bottle to rinse off the tip, uh, especially if you're adding quite a lot of liquid at, at a time, you'll get a lot of splatter. And so you need to rinse off the tip of the burette and the sides of the flask. And you can do that as much as you want. Um, you know, don't go crazy with it because then you dilute it too much, but um, it's okay to rinse as, you know, periodically. So here I'm adding uh, the base in in portions and swirling and notice every time I swirl, the pink color goes away. The end point is gonna be where it stays. And we're looking for a really light, light pink color so that we, we just barely 
have uh, or just exactly have neutralized the acid and the base together. So add it in portions and periodically um, rinse, rinse everything with your wash bottle. And eventually you might think, gosh, I might be getting close. And so maybe we can add this in drops instead of like streaming it in. So we could add it in drops, do some swirling. And if you start seeing that pink color sustaining a lot more as you swirl, then you should know that, oh, I'm getting a lot closer. And at that point, you'll want to go much more slowly. You might add just one drop and then swirl it, one drop, swirl it, trying to get that end point really well. So here I'm doing it drop wise. And I'm getting the sense that like I might be nearing the end point because that pink color is is staying a lot longer when I when I drip it in. So now I'm going to add just like one drop, swirl it really well, maybe rinse it because I know I'm getting close. We'll add one more drop. One drop at a time. Whoa, look at that. So that pink color is really staying. Oh, I thought I was really close. But you do want the pink color to stay for a while, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so. So if it did fade, that means you aren't done. You're probably one drop away. So very carefully add one extra drop, even like a half a drop that you can uh, wash off with the, with the wash bottle. Have it, the drop just kind of like dangling there rinse it off so fraction of a drop swirl and ooh beautiful so a light pink color is exactly what you're looking for and that's the end point of the titration you then want to record the final volume and write that down in your notebook